Hello, this is Professor Kitch, and this is part two of our webcast series on automating Microsoft Word to save you time. In this particular one, we're going to cover the use of styles to standardize formatting and also how to automatically create a table of contents. So buckle up, here we go. So for this webcast, we'll be using the same document that we used for the previous webcast. And you should already have updated that document so you have the proper page numbers on it. That is, no page number on the cover page. And then for the front matter, you should have Roman numerals 1 through 3. And then the body of the report should start with the Arabic numerals starting at 1. So before I teach you how to create styles, let's talk a little bit about why we'd want to use them. To do that, I'm going to look at the body of the report, and let's scroll up to the beginning of the body where the introduction is. I'm going to go ahead and turn on editing marks so we can see what's going on. And here we have a heading for our document. It's called the introduction. And we want all the headings in the documents to look the same. And so let's look at this and we say, you know, this heading just doesn't stand out enough. I'd like it if it was a little more prominent. So I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to make that heading a little bigger. So I'm going to change it from 11 point font to 12 point font. And I think also if I underlined it, it would be more obvious. And now I look at that and say, oh, that's a good heading. But I want all the other headings in the document to be the same. So I would have to scroll down to the next heading, which is here at the bottom of that page. And I'll click on that heading and then I'll have to change it to be 12 point font and underlined. And I could go to the next heading in the document, which is here, and do the same. And the next heading, and do the same. And I could certainly do that and get all the headings the same. And in this document, it's not very hard. There aren't very many headings. But if I had a large document with many headings, it would be a lot more trouble to get them all changed correctly. And let's say later I look at this and say, you know, I don't really like that underlining. I think I'd like to change them back so they're not underlined. And I went to take the underlines out of these. I would again have to go back through every single one of these headings and change them one at a time. Styles gives us a much easier way to do that. So we don't have to change all the headings one at a time. That's one of the motivations for using a style. There's other ones which will come out later in this webcast. So we're going to use styles to make sure all our headings are consistently formatted the same way. And if we change them, it's easy to change them. To do that, we're going to use this styles ribbon that's up here in the top of your screen. And you'll see in that ribbon, there's a whole bunch of different styles. There's a normal style, which is currently picked, and then there's these heading styles. And we're going to use these heading styles. So let's start by scrolling back up to the top of the body of the report, where our introduction is. And let's highlight that paragraph, and then we'll go up here to the top heading, and we're going to change that from its current style, which happens to be normal, to the style heading. And when we do that, you'll notice that the heading changes to this preformatted style which Word has, which is this blue color and it's a whole lot of ugly stuff. So we don't want to use that as our formatting, but we have now changed the style of this paragraph so that it's a heading. I'm going to click on the paragraph below it and you'll see that the style of that paragraph is normal. And if I click back in this one, it now has a style of heading. And if I go down and if I change every heading to the same style, so I'll click on this one and I'll change it to a heading one style. And I'll go to the next one. That one, change that to the heading one. That one to a heading one. And then finally, I think there's one more down here. I'm gonna change that to heading one. And now all the headings in my body have the same style and they're the style heading one. So all my headings in the body now are tagged with this heading one style, but they don't look the way I want them to look. And to show you how to best fix this, I want to scroll down to this page where there's two headings on one page. So let's look at this page. Now I don't like this blue font and it's also too big, so I really want to fix that. So I'm going to edit this particular paragraph, this particular heading, until it looks the way I want. And I don't want the font to be that blue color. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to change it back to black. And then that size of 16 points is way too big. So I'm going to change that back down to 
Oh, I don't know, to like 12 points. I do want it to be bold, so I'm going to make it bold. And, you know, I think that looks pretty good. So I would like all my headings to look like that. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is come back up here to the Style ribbon. I'm going to right-click on the Heading 1, and I'm going to click this menu item, Update Heading 1, to match the selection. So what that's going to do is change the style of Heading 1 to match the current paragraph that I've got highlighted. So I'm going to click that. This particular paragraph stayed the same, but notice that this paragraph down here also changed to match that style. And if I scroll up and look at all the other headings in the body, they also changed. So if I use styles, I can tag paragraphs or things in the document with the current style, and all the other paragraphs that are tagged with that style will have the same changes, and they'll all be consistent. So that helps me to get all the headings in this document to look exactly the same. And that's one good reason for using headings. But there are even more powerful reasons for using styles such as headings. And I'm going to show you the next one here by automatically creating a table of contents. So to do that, let's scroll back up in our document to where the table of contents is. Now here is a table of contents which I had manually entered in. And I typed each one of these paragraphs and I tabbed all the way out and I put the page numbers where each one of these headings appeared. And that's not too hard in a document like this, it's not very long. But if I added headings or if I added more text to it and these page numbers changed, then I would have to come back and edit this again. And that would just be a lot of work. So I think what I'd like to do is find a way to automatically do that so that if I change headings or add new headings, this whole table of contents gets automatically updated. And I can only do that if I've tagged all the headings with the correct style. Let me show you how to do that. In order to do that, I'm going to delete this manually inserted table of contents, and I'm going to go in and put an automatically generated table of contents. So to create an automatic table of contents, I'll navigate up to the References tab, click on the References tab, and then way over on the left is this table of contents function. I click on the down area there, and I see several styles of table of contents. I'm going to pick the second style there where it says Table of Contents and has the headings. And if I click on that, look, magically I have entered in here a Table of Contents that has all the headings in it that I had before. It's got the introductions, the challenges to secure water, solutions implemented, conclusions and references. Those are all the paragraphs that I just got through tagging. I do have an extra label here for Table of Contents, so I think I'll get rid of that and I'll delete that. And now I've generated an automatic table of contents. And the nice thing about it is, if anything changes in the document, I can update this. But if I look at this carefully, I'm missing some sections of my document. I have other sections besides these five right here. In fact, if I scroll up, I realize that I have an abstract section up here. And if I scroll down below the table of contents, I have a list of figures and a list of tables. And, and why aren't those in the table of contents? Well, the reason they're not in the table of contents is because I forgot to tag those as headings. If I click on this paragraph and go back to the Home tab, notice that paragraph is still tagged as a normal paragraph and not a heading. So I think I need to change those. Let's just fix this real quick. I'm going to change this paragraph to a heading 1 and this list of tables paragraph to a heading 1 also. I'm going to scroll back up here to where the abstract is. Also change that to a heading 1. And now let's go look at my table of contents. Huh, it didn't change even though I added those tags. Well, it didn't change because in the automatic table of contents, it only updates when you tell it to. And so if I click inside the table of contents here, you see I get this update tab. And if I click on that and say update table, it gives me two choices. I can either update just the page numbers in the existing table, or I can update the entire table. In this case, I want to update the entire table because I added a whole bunch of new paragraphs. So if I click update entire table and click OK, look at that. I now have a table of contents that has all the new headings in it the abstract, the list of figures, and the list of tables. And notice that 
the numbers are correct in this one. It has the Roman numerals for the front matter and the Arabic numerals for the back matter. So there's another really good reason to be using styles. If you use styles, you can do automatic things like insert a table of contents. So now in your Microsoft Word file, delete the manually inserted table of contents and insert your own automatic table of contents. And you can play around some more with tagging headings and stuff to figure out exactly how the table of contents works. Have fun!